Hey guys, we're working on the old Ford today, the uh, 1990 model F-150. The issue I'm having is the alternator is no longer charging. I noticed this uh, driving it to work since my voltmeter on the gauge cluster works. I noticed it was low. So then I pulled out my multimeter when I got to work and verified it was only putting out about 11.8 volts. So time for an upgrade. Um, I've already noticed with this truck. Mm, wind got that hood. I've already noticed that when I drive it at night and I have the headlights on as well as the radio or like the heater motor, it uh, does not like that. So it the current alternator couldn't keep up with that amount of uh, electrical draw I guess so I've been reading up on upgrading the alternator apparently it's a common swap on these old trucks this is the old 2G alternator Ford alternator 3G is the better is the newer model and that's what I went ahead and bought so I went ahead and bought some other parts too while I'm digging into it. I've got a squeak somewhere on the pulley system. And I want to get rid of that squeak. I've already tried putting belt dressing on it. That didn't help it. I'm going to replace the serpentine belt while I'm at it. And I have a couple tensioner pulleys here. Just in case I got a bad bearing. This is just a wiring... Uh, harness for the alternator i've got a fuse here i've got another one in the shed i'm got to decide which one i want to use this is another pulley i guess one's for idler one's for tensioner and air filter since i've never done that and that was cheap so the alternator i bought was for a 1997 thunderbird and i hope i bought the right one we're going to find out. So I got to be careful going through this to make sure my wires aren't crossed. First thing I'm going to do is disconnect the battery. So I got my fan and shroud off. That's going to give me a lot more room in here. I noticed this alternator is mounted where the mounting tabs on the actual alternator are here and here which means they are not like 180 degrees from each other. Um, the alternator I bought is has the two ears on the alternator 180 degrees from each other. So they're straight, you know. But it looks like this bracket accommodates that. So hopefully I don't have to go buy another alternator. This will be just fine. I got the belt off, I think. Uh, it was probably fine and not the issue. But I'm going to put a new one on it anyway, since I'm already in here. Okay, so I wrestled this thing out of here. And I'm wondering if the alternator was the problem. I hear that if you spin them like this, and they just keep on spinning, that means there's like, the brushes aren't catching it at all, and it's just not doing well. But also, we had some corrosion on one of these connectors. I doubt was helping it. That's the uh, male end of it. And then let me show you the other end. I kind of broke some of this plastic trying to get this thing off here. It's on there good. But this thing just looks like a mess. So I'm pretty sure for the alternator upgrade, we're not using this particular harness. We're just splice the wires from it. So, And if what I read is correct, these were a fire hazard this connector looks better but all right i guess i got some uh comparing to do i'm gonna see if uh this new alternator is even close to fitting okay so i got the wiring harness for the alternator out of here and i saw some cobbling together going on over here and some exposed wire so that could have been an issue. Glad I'm taking care of all this. It was right up there next to the solenoid. According to the information I've been reading up on, I don't think we're going to use any of this since I have the new connector right here. 
And then I had this amplifier wiring kit in the shed back there. And it has a lot of heavy duty battery cable that I can cut to fit and everything. And it's also got a fusible link right here. So that's 150 amp. This alternator is rated at 130. So if anything shorts out, 150 is about what you want. So I'm gonna use that battery cable to kind of make myself some new wires and ditch this kind of sketchy set up here. I might have to reuse that connector. I gotta read up on my uh, wiring diagram. I've got my old tensioner pulley out right here and this bearing is obviously bad. Um, it's kind of hard to show you with one hand. I don't know if y'all can hear that noise. Anyway, this is uh, not good, so we're going to replace it, and hopefully that will take care of my uh, belt noise. Alright guys, we're going to have to come back to this in a little bit. I got the wrong alternator. I had this thing mounted up in there, and I was shaving off a little bit of the bracket where it was hitting. And found out that my bolt holes don't line up, so... This isn't long enough. The distance from the two mounting plates is not enough. So, got to get another one. Turns out, uh, I think the Taurus 3.8 liter alternator is the one to get. So, I've already ordered one on Amazon. They're going to get it to me. Believe it or not, the local auto parts stores uh, couldn't get it to me any quicker than Amazon. So, Amazon had the best price, so we're going to give that a shot. It's kind of inconvenient. My truck is kind of incapacitated right now. We just got to work around it, I guess, this work week. And if we have to, we'll figure out a way to get it out of here. But I'll update you guys when that happens. Uh, oh, yeah, I was making myself some wiring. I was pretty proud of myself. I was using some heat shrink and stuff like that. The stator wire goes right there AutoZone had the connector for that but they wanted $48 for a little plastic connector that looks similar to this so I actually broke a connector and was gonna make this work but Amazon has it the correct connector for six dollars and if I gotta wait on an alternator I might as well wait on the connector as well so we'll uh we'll get it done but that's all I can do now. Talk to y'all later. All right, y'all. So I'm working on the alternator for the truck again. And we got the right one here. I actually got this unit off of Amazon. And uh, haven't tested it yet. But I had to clock it. Um, super easy to do. I just looked it up on YouTube. And I had to get a bigger serpentine belt. This is the one I am using. Got it from Napa. It's a little bit bigger than stock. Um, I'm using just about all of the play that the tensioner has. Uh, maybe I should have got a little bit of a smaller one. But I did go up two sizes at the store. One would have been enough, I'm guessing. So... But everything seems snug. We'll uh, test it and see if it slips. I don't think it will. The alternator, um, I'm gonna put on the screen what this came from. I, I already forgot. It's been a week and work's been crazy. Um, the correct alternator, I think it was from a Taurus. That's what I was supposed to get. 94 Taurus, 3.8 liter. I'll put on the screen if that's correct or not, but I'm finishing up my wiring harness. Just noticed I need to disconnect the battery again. Um, I'm finishing up my wiring harness. I got the correct plug. Here's the plug for the stator wire on the, well, this is the packaging for it. This is what the plug looks like. 
AutoZone wanted 40 something dollars for this thing. Amazon had it for six and free two day shipping. So that's what I ended up doing. I got both this and the alternator from Amazon. Um, and I'll go ahead and put the link for both of these in the description so y'all can check it out. So we should be good to go. I just got to finish up my uh, power cord. And hopefully we'll have this thing together before long. I already got the new serpentine belt on there. Alrighty guys, I just tested it, um, and it's charging. I uh, turned my headlights on, air condition on, and the voltage doesn't drop any more than is reasonable. So I'm very happy with it. I measured it at idle uh, with no accessories on, no headlight. Actually, the headlights were on, but air condition was not. And it came up to be like 14.2 volts. So that's charging real well. Happy with that. So thanks for watching, guys. That's going to do it for this video. I'm going to put some of the parts that I used in the uh, description down there. And that's how you do a 3G alternator swap on a 1990 F-150 4.9 liter. Another thing that was cool is I didn't have to modify my alternator bracket. I was able to use the outer outer bolt holes so it didn't use the same bolt holes as the one I used before as the original alternator I mean as you can see it used that one right there and then it used I don't know if y'all can see that but right under that pulley uses the left bolt hole instead of the right the original alternator used the right so Hopefully this will uh, help save you guys some time. I'm not sure. I, I started it up and the belt I had on it was slipping because it was just too long and the tensioner wasn't doing enough. So this is the correct belt. 6K994. So that's what's working for me. I turn on headlights, air condition, and rev it and belt does not squeal. There's enough tension on there to keep it in place, so. Alrighty. I'm gonna put the fan and fan shroud in here and I'm gonna call it a day. Appreciate y'all watching.